Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to some more Total War Attila. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Kingdom of Westeros mod, which goes ahead and completely changes up the Grand Campaign start positions and factions to be kind of in the Game of Thrones universe, which is a really, really cool idea. I will preface, though, at the beginning of this video that this mod is very much in its bare bones state, pre-alpha. There's no units currently in the game itself, which is kind of definitely killing the immersion and the whole point of Westeros. However, I really really like the direction they're going at and they're also just planning on you know creating a really interesting grand campaign so this video isn't so much a go out and play this mod right now just to let you know that it more it exists and you should go over and at least give them some words of encouragement as they do work more and more on this mod because it's a really really cool concept it's a really cool idea and I think it also goes to show that you don't need to have a custom map to make stuff work they've gone ahead and divided up Europe and the Middle East and the North of Africa which is the normal Tiller map into sections and they've carved off empires and I really like what they've done with that so that's what we're going to be showing off in today's video um, and I mean you never know maybe they'll be able to get their hands on the seven kingdoms units from the old mod the seven kingdoms he, he's now moved over to kingdom come deliverance to make his mod so maybe he'll be more than happy to allow these people to use them units because I think even if you just get them units into this mod it will completely take it to the next level will make it really really interesting and then you can start to build up from there you know adding in custom builds buildings, adding in a uh, different architecture, which is something Rise and Mordor are doing to make it feel not like Europe and not like Attila, but more like the Lord of the Rings universe, which I think is very interesting indeed. And it's really exciting to see all of these mods suddenly start to come together. So in the mod, obviously ignore this over in the right hand side. You guys will see the campaign map very, very soon. And it's completely different to what you're seeing over here. So you have a whole range of factions to, to pick from in the beginning. Um, again, none of these have custom units. They have the, the default units in the tiller at the moment. Uh, so, you know, as I said, don't expect us to jump into this and this to be, you know, completely finished or something. It's very early, early footage and obviously pre-alpha. So we have the Western Lands, the Storm Lands. We have the Crown Lands, the Reach. We have the Vale, Dawn, the Northern factions with House Stark, Bolton and the Wildlings. We also have the Iron Islands, the Freys, the Tullys and also Dragonstone uh, along with Cal. Trago, uh, which is great. He starts over in the east uh, in a really nice position. The city-states of Essos, we have the normal desert kingdoms, which is some reason still in here, uh, the Night's Watch, and obviously Daenerys Targaryen. So let's jump in as the Westerlands, and I can show you guys the glory of the full map. And I like really like the way that they've gone ahead and divided up the map into empires. I feel like the geography really, really fits, and I, I think this should be like a lesson to a lot of the uh, other modders out there as well, who are working on you know fantasy stuff like rise of mordor which just goes to show you really honestly don't need you know middle earth or westeros to really get your your mod into a working thing you can go ahead and just carve out empires try and make it just a really cool experience and then provide the players with uh, with units custom units and custom buildings and custom architecture in the cities to just completely change up the campaign i don't think many people would care if they could get their hands on rise of mordor in the campaign right now and it just it'd be in Europe they'd be absolutely okay with that and I, I personally agree with them you know it doesn't have to be Middle Earth it doesn't have to be Westeros something as well to note before we do jump straight into this and take a bigger better look at it in Thrones of Britannia obviously being the, the you know the whole Great British Isles that mob would be really really good or that game would be really really good for a Westeros Total War type of mob because it's a huge area you've got the whole of the Great British Isles to go ahead and stick in your factions and you know Westeros is quite sim like quite you know has a quite a few similarities to Great Britain so personally I would love to see a Thrones of Britannia Game of Thrones mod I think that'd be really really cool and the fact that um Thrones of Britannia also deals with like leveling levying vassals and stuff like that again really really cool stuff but let's jump straight back into this mod. So as you can see, the empires are split up quite nicely. You have the reach over to the far left, stretching from the uh, top of France down to the bottom of Spain. Obviously having the biggest empire, and I believe France is one of the most fertile provinces, so that definitely makes sense. Dawn down here in the north of Africa, um, they're going to be stretching again. A pretty big empire for Dawn, actually. I'm surprised they have so many. But again, I think that's to facilitate the city-states of Essos, which are over here, kind of leaving them segregated from everything 
everyone else, uh, obviously with the uh, the the straights down here um, by Alexandria. It's kind of to kind of push them off to one side, and then you also have Cole Drago over here, um, and some a few other factions over to the east as well, kind of with their roaming hordes, which I thought was a really really cool way of doing it and and pushing them up. Then if we go up northwards, we do have the men of the Vale, uh, obviously in the mountainous area of the. Uh, of, of Greece in, in the map. Again, I like that kind of idea being very mountainous, which Greece is. We can even just jump into it on the campaign map to see it more. Obviously, you know, this kind of fits really nicely to the, the surroundings of the Vale in Westeros. Then as we continue to go up, we have the Riverlands, and then next to them, as we go further over into kind of Italy, we have the Crownlands, and then we also have the Baratheons down here, I guess, which is, you know, the Stormlands. Then over to the east, we do have the north along with the Freys and also the Boltons, the Mandalays and the Umbers and the Glovers. We also have the uh, the Mormons up here as well to the north. So I really like the way that they've kind of cut up mods like this and cut up the areas to be a lot more, um, I guess, a lot more house-based, because I think that's something very good about Game of Thrones, which needs to be pushed across. We also have the Night's Watchmen as well. We're just going to be sitting right here. We have the Shadow Tower. We have, uh, I don't know, I'm sure we'll see the other keeps as well somewhere along here. If we continue going on. There we go. Castle Black right there, by the way. This could actually be the wall as well. And maybe you could stick some wildlings up there. That'd be really, really cool. So as I said, I, I love the way that they've gone ahead and approached this mod. Not with the you know expectation to make everything really, really awesome straight away. They're kind of going in, hopefully adding in bits and bits. I believe this mod was uploaded like to the Steam Workshop like half a month ago. So as you can see, I'm sure they've, they've done a lot to the game since and I'm hoping this video will help to encourage them just to keep on going on. I really also like the, the way that they've gone ahead and approached these buildings as well by renaming all of them to the, the cities of you know, the Game of Thrones. So obviously we have Pike right here in the Great British Isles and the Greyjoy starting off in the Great British Isles is a great addition I think. So, you know, you actually feel like you're fighting all the way over these, you know, traditional provinces. I imagine if we go over to Winterfell, yeah, Winterfell is right here. And these provinces do start off pretty heavily upgraded as well. If we find Castle Rock right here, you can see it does start off as a tier 4 province. It'd be nice if maybe they kind of messed around with these, adding in like gold mines and stuff. Because obviously Castle Rock doesn't have a gold mine, which again, kind of kills a bit of the immersion. But I'm sure something like that will be added on later. I really do love the way that the buildings look as well. I believe this is just normal Asia Charlemagne type of stuff. But it is really, really cool nonetheless, and I, I think it, it fits as well, you know, having some of these buildings in here really do fit the way the factions look, you know, and uh, Age of Charlemagne just has that nice aesthetic, like the bone carver, that would be perfect for a northern faction, and I mean, the background as well just kind of really suits you know, the, some of the factions, and it doesn't just have to be, you know, one faction stuff, so I think what we'll do is we'll quickly jump in as another faction, because I want to see maybe what one of these other factions look like, maybe we'll see, look at the hordes and stuff, so let's jump out of this really quickly. And we'll just dive straight away back in. Maybe we'll play as the North so we can just see their starting position. Because I imagine they're going to have a ton of vassals to begin the battle with. And you know, the faction traits and the like area traits as well. The cultural traits, I think they're called. Will be so easy to change. And it's such a small addition. You just have to work out what, it, what would work. Obviously for the Lannisters, you could say, for example, have that they get more money from gold and silver mines just to make it more gamey uh, and more more effective. So here we're playing as the North, right? Uh, yes, we're playing as the North. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, the car starts if we jump out here and go to the diplomatic status. You can see that the North is in control of all of these houses. And I think this would be a great way to show this but obviously for all the other factions as well now granted it's probably going to be quite hard to do for like the stormlands because they are only given a few provinces so they don't maybe have, have as much as the north but you could add in a few houses here and there especially within the reach you know have the Tales and, and high tower and all of that um stretching from the uh, spanish coast you know maybe up to france and just have them all scattered around but also i would totally understand if they didn't want to do that 
and they wanted to, you know, heavily focus more on just having one big faction and having these factions just waging war against each other. Because it does make sense, you know, and the way that allies work in Attila and, and just Total War in general, really, doesn't work as well as as you would like it to work. So I think maybe just selecting everyone into one big northern faction would be fun, especially if you start off people with different armies in the beginning. So you do have, you know, Rob Stark leading his army. As this is set in the War of the Five Kings, I don't think I even mentioned that the year you could have you know the, the Lannisters starting off with like 10 armies maybe you know Rob starting off with like three or four and just letting the battle kind of just un unfold straight away as this is set in the war of the five kings so everyone's kind of already le levied their troops and are ready to go as we can see Winterfell right there. And there are a few custom cities as well on the workshop which I can maybe get to use. Maybe bring that into a mod. Um, that's pretty much it for the video really. I don't think technology has changed at all. I think this is still very, very similar to, to what it was. So all of this stuff is quite easy work. I think the most important thing is bringing in units and custom models into the mod itself. Because if they can bring them into the mod, I think that would, like, that would make it okay. I wouldn't care if I'm researching default technology. That stuff can come later. If I've got my armies and if I've got Rob Stark leading an army of Stark soldiers and they look like Stark soldiers, I can get over that we're fighting in Europe and the Middle East and in the north of Africa. I, I could get over us building normal default buildings because to be fair, like these Age of Charlemagne buildings are, are pretty cool. And I think, is this different as well? Oh, so maybe they have added in some cool buildings because I don't think I've ever seen this Lord's Castle before. I don't think I've ever seen it. Are there custom units at all? I don't think there are custom units, right? If I'm not mistaken, because the generals all look the same. Yeah, these are just normal units, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I did see some custom units on, on the workshop page, which I'll link down below in the description. Um, but that's cool nonetheless, you know. There's no custom units at all, mercenaries or anything, no. You can level your own Stark member, that's, that's a bit different. So yeah, I think I could, I could get over all the different stuff and just fight in the world of... Um, you know, just fighting this world and, and just having, you know, them units and the AI building Game of Thrones units, I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, and again, it's something I wouldn't really care about that, you know, maybe the buildings look like they're in Attila and I'm fighting a campaign with Stark soldiers. Especially if they could change the models and also change, like, the pictures and stuff, like having the proper Stark family tree in the game and, you know, being able to assign people in. Um, and I guess that also does go ahead and you can actually see they have managed to change this as well. The old gods in, which is very cool, diplomatic situations as well. War of the Lannisters, military allies with the Riverlands. Like, that's just so cool and I really hope they do, you know, develop this mod and make it very interesting. Even if they go ahead and just convert it over to Thrones of Britannia when that comes out in a, mo in a month's time. But, you know, obviously putting in work right now would be great. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, as I said, make sure to go check out the mod at least, you know, just give it a little glance over, go and speak to them on the forums and stuff, you know. I think it'd be really cool just to push this mod forward and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one and fish out.